Hello students, welcome to the session. Today we are going to present with hyper conjugation, the most expected questions for the NEET examinations. It is from general organic chemistry. This is Suresh, faculty of chemistry from infinity land. And we are going to see what is hyper conjugation. And this particular type of hyper conjugation we are going to see in NEET examination for all the varieties of stability of alkanes, stability of carbocations and stability of free radicals. And I just want to show you what is hyperconjugation, what are the other names for the hyperconjugation in the organic chemistry. So, it is also called as sigma pi conjugation, also said to be no bond resonance and also said to be Becker Nathan effect and is also called as sigma pi conjugation. And what is this particular hyperconjugation? I am going to explain in a simplest way you can see what is hyperconjugation. It is a delocalization of the sigma electron with pi electron system. Let us say a particular example alkene it is going to be CH3 and CH double bond CH2. In that there is a sigma bond with this respective to this sp3 hybridized carbon and it is sp2 hybridized carbon. You know this carbon is sp2. It is going to have a pi bond with respect to, to this carbon has two hydrogen atoms and this has an one hydrogen atom there is a pi bond between these two right and this pi bond is going to overlap this carbon to sp3 hybridized carbon and it is going to be like this hydrogen and hydrogen and hydrogen and this is a sigma bond and there is a pi bond and this pi bond and a sigma bond are going to overlap and this blue color indicated overlap is called as hyperconjugation that by virtue of definition you can say that and this hyperconjugation explains many things and when you go with the organic chemistry uh, her compound may hyperconjugation ho gai nahi okay so what are the conditions that are required for the hyperconjugation it always happens in a vacant p orbital and respect to anti bonding pi orbitals that what happened this is anti bonding pi orbital and vacant p orbital and also there should be at least one alpha hydrogen and what is the alpha hydrogen carbon you can see this is a carbon and this is a carbon of sp2 and the carbon that is attached to the sp2 is called as alpha carbon and the hydrogen that is attached to alpha carbon are called alpha hydrogens and in order to show hyperconjugation there should be at least one alpha hydrogen should be present and based on this we are going to see and where this hyperconjugation is and in the session we are going to discuss about the applications of hyperconjugation let us go ahead with this hyperconjugation in carbocations so the hyperconjugation in carbocation you can see this is your carbocation i want to say it is sp2 hybridized in this sp2 hybridized carbon and there is a sigma bond and the sigma bond is going to interact with this pi so you can see this carbocations and carbon free radicals and also in carbon alkenes so this is your hyperconjugation in your carbocations and that can be structurally represented isovalent hyperconjugation systems like this. So, this is your ethyl carbocation. In this ethyl carbocation, you can see there is a sigma bond is overlapping like this, become a pi bond and there is no bond and this no bond becoming is starting with a resonance and also this bond comes here and there is no bond but resonance is happening. So, we can say this is called no bond resonance. As a result of this charge is being delocalized, hence hyperconjugation in carbocations gives the extra stability for the carbocations. And also hyperconjugation you can see in the free radicals. In the hyperconjugation in the free radicals you can see this is a free radical and there is a bond and homolysis takes place. As a result of homolysis you can see a pi bond is that is formed. As a result of this, you can see multiple homolysis structures like this. And there is a carbocation 
and a hydrogen free radical there is no free hydrogen free radical this is delocalized system without any bond like this in free radicals also you can find hyper conjugation and it can stabilized and also you can see hyper conjugation occurs in the case of carbanions some students apply carbanion also for the hyper conjugation so is it true or not i want to say this is not true why because carbon is sp3 hybridized as the carbon is sp3 hybridized you can see there is no hyper conjugation in carbanions this is very very important for neat examination preparation and it is an important point that you have to note it and also we can see hyper conjugation in alkenes this is your propene in the propene you can see this is sp2 hybridized carbon and this is sp3 hybridized carbon so there is a alpha hydrogen whenever alpha hydrogen is there this alpha hydrogen is going to participate in conjugation so that you are going to get a h plus and it is participating in hyper conjugation there is a delocalization and this is a delocalized structure so we can see hyper conjugation in carbocations we can see hyper conjugation in free radicals we can see hyper conjugation in alkenes so sare ke sara jo alkenes carbocations carbanions hydro hyper conjugation ka wajah se ye stability badhte jayega hyper conjugation in toluene this is actually what you call it as a bakernathan effect this is methyl benzene you can say it's a toluene and the hydrogen is going to give its sigma bond become a pi bond and this is going to give a bond like this and it is going to give its various structures in this toluene and this is the structures that is observed in the toluene by backer and nathan so it also gives the ring activation scenario for this toluene you can see because of this hyper conjugation there is a negative charge you can observe on the benzene and because of this negative charge present on the ortho position of benzene and para position of benzene again ortho position of benzene because of this hyper conjugation toluene ring is activated and it is going to be ortho and para director that is the actual rule not due to positive inductive effect due to hyper conjugation mind it and also you can see so hyper conjugation also explains the stability of carbocations that we are discussing and also stability of free radicals and also stability of alkenes and you can also see deuterium if you see deuterium carbon and hydrogen bond is and carbon deuterium bond is carbon to deuterium bond is more stronger as compared to carbon to hydrogen bond as a result of this carbon to deuterium bond jaha par hai waha par hyper conjugation kam hoga and carbon to hydrogen hyper conjugation ka effect jyada hoga that is a noteworthy point you can use this point to crack the questions in neat examinations and also what are the applications of hyper conjugation so far we have seen what is hyper conjugation and kaha par hyper conjugation dikha jayega and also we are going to see the applications of hyper conjugation is very simple and we are going to get the questions here stability of intermediates like carbon free radical and carbon cation and heat of hydrogenation and stability of alkenes and also bond length in unsaturated systems and you can see applications of hyper conjugation stability of carbocation so hyper conjugation is directly proportional to number of alpha hydrogens as the number of alpha hydrogens increases stability increases because hyper conjugation effect increases you can see this is a tertiary butyl carbocation and this is a propyl carbocation ethyl carbocation and methyl carbocation if you look into this this is the carbon attached to this carbon positive that is alpha carbon and it has alpha hydrogen 3 alpha hydrogen 3 alpha hydrogen 3 total nine alpha hydrogen are seen and you can see in this 3 plus 3 total six alpha hydrogen are seen here only three alpha hydrogen are seen here no alpha hydrogens 
So, stability is directly proportional to number of alpha hydrogens and hyperconjugation. So, that I would like to say tertiary butyl carbocation is more stable than isopropyl carbocation and ethyl carbocation and methyl carbocation. This type of orders are important for neat examination. And also you can see 9 alpha hydrogens for this free radical. You can say this is your free radical. Carbon with the odd electron is a free radical and this is your sp2 hybridized and this is a 3 alpha hydrogens just like in the previous examples 3 alpha hydrogens and 3 alpha hydrogens there are 9 alpha hydrogens and here 6 alpha hydrogens just it is a simplest technique to handle the questions for the hyperconjugation is called the alpha hydrogens so any kind of difficult questions we can handle with this particular trick and you have 3 plus 3 6 alpha hydrogens and just only 3 alpha hydrogen yaha par kuch alpha hydrogen nahi hai zero alpha hydrogens so, so that we can see the stability as the number of alpha hydrogens increases hyperconjugation structures increases and the stability increases tabhi aapko aa jayega a is more stable than b is more stable than c is more stable than d it's pretty simple and also heat of hydrogenation it is looking little complicated but i am going to explore this one is the simplest one number the amount of heat liberated one one mole of hydrogen is added to carbon to carbon double bond is called as heat of hydrogenation you can compare the heat of hydrogenation with the different compounds here two carbon to carbon double bonds you have this much heat of hydrogenation minus 60.8 and only one alpha hydrogen and only one double bond you have minus 28.5 you have only one alpha hydrogen and you have minus 30 so why only one alpha hydrogen why the difference comes you can see hyper conjugation you can see here 3 plus 1 plus 1 5 alpha hydrogens are there and uh, here you have only one alpha hydrogen is there this much hyper conjugation is seen so more the hyper conjugation less will be the heat of hydrogenation that i just want to give you as a trick and this trick can help you to crack any competitive examination question that is for you heat of hydrogenation is directly proportional to first point is number of pi bonds second point is stability of alkene third point is number of alpha hydrogens if we follow this you can crack any type of questions so with this question with this trick i just want to give you a simple question that can be seen based on heat of hydrogenation you are asked to compare the heat of hydrogenation a b c d and simple how to do that count the number of alpha hydrogens simply heat of hydrogenation is inversely proportional to the stability and the stability is directly proportional to number of alpha hydrogens based on that you can see the structure a three alpha hydrogens are there and uh, structure b you have three here three here i got six alpha hydrogens and also structure c i got nine alpha hydrogens and uh, structure d i got three and three and three there are 12 alpha hydrogens and as more the number of alpha hydrogens lesser is the heat of hydrogenation therefore heat of hydrogenation follows d greater than c greater than b greater than a that is your appropriate answer for this question this kind of pattern changes can be asked for neat examination my dear students mind it is an excellent example and also i am going to take one more example looking complicated but it is very simple Compare the heat of hydrogenation of the given molecule. Previous one is looking simple and this is looking complicated but it is also simple. And when this compound is given, I can identify there are three alpha hydrogens here. There are three alpha hydrogens here and there are two alpha hydrogens here. There are two alpha hydrogens. Total how many alpha hydrogens I can see? 10 alpha hydrogens. Similarly, I can see with respect to, to this, this is alpha with respect to, to this is alpha with respect to, to this is alpha right with respect to, to this is alpha with respect to, to this is alpha 
with respect to, to this is alpha with respect to, to this is alpha simply identifying alpha hydrogens can clear you all the concepts here the solution comes to be yes you can see this in case of here there are four alpha carbons and uh, 10 alpha hydrogens in the case of b i can say six alpha hydrogens in the case of c there are four alpha hydrogens in the case of d there are three alpha hydrogens as we know it it is going to be as the number of alpha hydrogens increases hyperconjugation increases and the stability increases and the heat of hydrogenation decreases so the heat of hydrogenation answer is going to be d is greater than c is greater than b is greater than a and this is your identification of alpha hydrogens and also we can say this is a stability order and this is of heat of hydrogenation order it is going to be completely opposite and reverse right and at last we can see the bond length and wherever hyperconjugation is seen bond length is decreased for the carbon to carbon double bond you can see carbon to carbon x carbon to carbon double bond it is named y carbon to carbon double bond it is named z and a double bond x y z bond length how to compare here there is no alpha hydrogens there is no hyper conjugation here i can see hyper conjugation is there with virtue of three hydrogens here hyper conjugation is there by virtue of six alpha hydrogens so jaha par jada hyper conjugation hai waha par bond length kam hona chahiye that's the reason why does the correct order of bond length hyper conjugation ka wajay se bond length bad gaya so z is greater than y is greater than x so hyper conjugation ka wajay se aapka six alpha hydrogens and three alpha hydrogens and zero alpha hydrogens more the hyper conjugation and it is going to be the longer is the bond that is the correct effect and today we discussed about what is hyperconjugation in a short lecture and where it is applicable and what are the kind of questions that we can get from the hyperconjugation and we enjoyed hope you enjoyed this session well and you please like and share the session thank you very much thank you